Hi guys, this is Miss Goal. Welcome to the first lesson in Module 3, Generating Equivalent Expressions. Your outcomes for today's lesson are students generate equivalent expressions using the fact that addition and multiplication can be done in any order, which is the commutative property, and any grouping, which is the associative property. Students recognize how any order or any grouping can be applied in subtracting a problem using the additive inverse relationships, which means adding the opposite to form a sum, and likewise with division problems by using the multiplicative inverse relationships, which is multiplying by the reciprocal, to form a product. Students recognize that any order does not apply to expressions mixing addition and subtraction multiplication, leading to the need to follow the order of operations. We first want to define some of the terms that we're going to be using in this module. The first thing we have is variable. A variable is a symbol, such as a letter, that represents a number. Please understand that this is basically just a placeholder for a number. It really represents some number that I don't know at this time. Some examples, typically you're going to see x is the most commonly used, followed by y and z. And then a lot of times you will also see letters like a, b, and c being used but you can pretty much use any letter in the alphabet. There's a couple that you usually want to avoid for certain mathematical reasons or just reasons by, based on how they look. For example, you usually don't want to use a T if possible because it looks like a plus sign. Um, you usually don't want to use an S because a lot of people will confuse it for the number five. You don't want to use the letter I because it actually represents a mathematical set of numbers called the imaginary numbers. You don't want to use E because typically E represents an actual mathematical number similar to pi. You usually don't want to use L because it looks like 1, and you usually don't want to use O because it looks like 0. Numerical expression is a number, or it is any combination of sums, differences, products, or division of numbers that evaluates to a number. So an ex a numerical expression example could be 2 plus 4. 5 minus 7. 12 times 6, or 15 divided by 5. These are all examples of numerical expressions. Really, the key element that's missing in a numerical expression, it doesn't involve a variable. If it does involve a variable, then we're talking about algebraic expressions. An expression is a numerical expression, or it is a result of replacing sum or all of the numbers in a numerical expression with variables. So if it has a variable, it qualifies for algebraic expression. Some examples could include x minus 1, 5b plus 3, a squared minus 2a plus 11, or 1 half x to the fifth power. Let's take a look at example 1. Part A says rewrite 5x plus 3 and 5x minus 3 by combining like terms. Write the original expressions and expand each term using addition. What are the new expressions equivalent to? To expand a number, we can actually go back and think about when we did bar modeling. Notice that when you had separate x's, when you combine them, they became the total number of x's. So if we wanted to work backwards to expand 5x plus 3x, it would look like this. Grouped together, we have x plus x plus x plus x plus x. Now this represents 5x because we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. To represent 3x would be x plus x plus x. So when I regroup these together, we can see we have a total of 5, 6, 7, 8 x's. Now notice, we've already talked about something like this called combining like terms. If we have 5x's plus 3x's, we now have a total of 8 x's. In order to combine like terms, we really have to have the same variable raised to the same power. With 5x minus 3x, let's expand the 5x's. So this would be x plus x plus x plus x plus x. And this represents 5x, but what we're going to do is take away three of those x's. So let's group within this three x's. So if we take those away, we'd only be left with these two x's. So my result is 2x. Again, you can see the idea of combining like terms. 5x, take away three x's, we're left with two x's. Part B says find the sum of 2x plus 1 and 5x. 
So here, if I have 2x plus 1, and find the sum, sum means to add numbers together. So we're going to add this to 5x. So the first thing I want to do here is get my like terms together. So I'm going to use the commutative property to switch these. So I'll say 2x plus 5x plus 1. And I'm going to group these two together because they're like terms. So 2x plus 5 will give us a total of 7x's. And then I have this plus 1 on the end. We're just going to tack it right onto the end of this because it can't be combined with the 2x and the 5x to get 7x because they're not like terms. X's are not like terms with constants. Part C says find the sum of negative 3a plus 2 and 5a minus 3. So I'm adding together negative 3a plus 2 and 5a minus 3. So again, I want to be able to move things around and use the commutative property. So what I'd really like to do here is instead of subtracting 3, let's do add the opposite, which would be to add a negative 3. Then I'm free to rearrange by using the commutative property of addition. So why don't we flip-flop our 2 and 5 to get us negative 3a plus 5a plus 2 plus a negative 3. So if I combine like terms here, 5a minus 3a is 2a. And if it helps, make them into objects. So this is 5 apples. Take away 3 apples. We're left with 2 apples. Here, 2 minus 3 we learned in our previous module. Same signs keep and add, different signs subtract. 2 minus 3 is 1. Take the sign of the bigger number, then we'll be exact. So our final result here is 2a minus 1. Looking at example 2, we're going to start to talk about multiplication. So I want to start by giving you an idea of what this really means. So multiplying by 3 really is stating that we actually will have three 2x's being added together. So if I expand this, it's 2x plus 2x plus 2x. Well, we know that this combines to become 6x. So I want you to just look at our original problem. Notice that to get our answer, we could have just multiplied 3 times 2 to give us 6. So we can take that stance here. So for example, on B, I can use the commutative property to flip the y and the 5, giving me 4 times 5 times y. So 4 times 5, we can do associative property here, grouping them together to give us 20. And the y is not multiplied by anything, so it's still y. Part C, I can use the associative property to group 4 and 2 together to give us 8, and then the Z is still there because it isn't multiplied by anything else other than 8. Notice that we get a little bit more complex with problems D and E, so I have to start following PEMDAS. So if it helps, write that above. So when I go through parentheses, 2 times x, nothing to do there. I don't have any exponents, but I do have multiplication. So as we learned over there, 3 times 2x is really equivalent to 6x. And as we learned down in part b, 4y times 5 is equal to 20y. Now the next thing I'd look for would be addition and subtraction. However, if you look at these two terms, 6x and 20y are not like terms. You can think of it as we have six Xerox machines and 20 yo-yos. I can't combine those together, so I would still have to say I have six Xerox machines and 20 yo-yos. Part E is going to combine parts A, B, and C through addition. So we already know if it's 6x, and we use multiplication to do that, so I'm still following PEMDAS. Same thing for 4y times 5 is 20y, and we know here we can multiply 4 times 2 to give us 8z. Again, I want you to notice that we don't have any like terms. We have x's, y's, and z's, so they cannot be combined together. They are not like terms. So an expression in expanded form is an expression that is written as sums and or differences of products whose factors are numbers, variables, or variables raised to whole number powers is said to be an expanded form. A single number variable or a single product of numbers and or variables is also considered to be an expanded form. Some examples of this include the number 324, 3x, 5x plus 3 minus 40, x plus 2x plus 3x 
and so on. Each summand of an expression in expanded form is called a term. For example, the expression 2x plus 3x plus 5 consists of three terms, which are 2x, 3x, and 5. Notice that the key part to a term is that they're the elements that are separated by addition or subtraction. Coefficients of a term are the number found by multiplying just the number in a term together. For example, given the product 2 times x times 4, its equivalent term is 8x. The number 8 in that term is the coefficient. So when I ask for a coefficient, I'm not asking for a variable, I'm asking for the number in front of the variable. An expression in expanded form with all of its terms collected is said to be in standard form. For example, 2x plus 3x plus 5 is an expression written in expanded form. However, it's not in standard form yet because we can combine 2x and 3x. The equivalent standard form expression would be 5x plus 5. Let's take a look at example 3. I'm asked to subtract 40 plus 9 minus 30 plus 2, and notice the 40 and 9 are grouped together and the 30 and 2 are grouped together. So I have to make sure that I'm following order of operations, which is again, tem dots. So here, parentheses comes first. Now notice here, I can combine the 40 and the 9. So I can get 49 here, and I can combine the 30 and the 2 to get 32 here. Going through, I don't have any multiplication or division, but I do have addition or subtraction. 49 minus 32 will leave me with 17. We'll look at a similar problem in part B. We have 3x plus 5 minus 4, all grouped together, minus 4x plus 11, which is also grouped together. In this case, I don't have numbers that will evaluate to a single term. I can't combine the 3x with the 5y, and likewise I can't combine either of those with 4. In the second group, I can't combine 4x and 11. So I have to follow order of operations still, but when I go through and I look for p, I don't actually have anything in the parentheses that I can combine on either of these. So there is no parentheses even though you actually see them. I also don't have any exponents. What I do have is multiplication, and this may be hard to see, but if you look at this, we have a negative or subtraction, and you can look at this as multiplying by a negative one to all of the elements inside the parentheses. So this is really the distributive property, and what we're distributing is a negative one. Likewise, I actually have a positive one out in front of this set of parentheses that I'm going to distribute to take care of my parentheses. So whenever you have parentheses, you really want to put a one out in front of each of them. And if there's a sign in front of that parentheses, that would be a negative one if it was a subtraction sign. So here, if I distribute, one times three x is three x, one times five y is five y, one times negative four is negative four, then we have negative one times four x is negative four x because a positive times a negative is a negative. And I have negative 1 times positive 11. Again, negative times a positive is a negative, and this would be 11. So I have taken care of multiplication is this step. The next thing I'm going to take care of is any addition or subtraction, which is combining like terms, CLT. So here, we can combine our x's together. So here I see I have 3x minus 4x. So if it helps, you can kind of underline them and group them. But the big point I want to make here is this is not 3x plus 4. Because there's a sign in front of it that is negative, it means this whole thing is negative. So this is negative 4x. So if I have 3x's and I take away 4, I would have negative 1x. I can't combine anything with the 5y, so we would still have plus 5y. But I can combine negative 4 and negative 11, so I can group those together. And same signs keep an at. So I have 4 plus 11 is 15. And I keep the negative sign. So my final result here is negative x plus 5y minus 15. Example five is a pretty long word problem, so I'm gonna go through and highlight information that's important as we read. It costs Margo a processing fee of $3 to rent a storage unit, plus $17 per month to keep her belongings in the unit. Her friend Carissa wants to store a box of her belongings in Margo's storage unit 
and tells her that she will pay her $1 towards the processing fee and $3 every month that she keeps the box in storage. Write an expression in standard form that represents how much Margo will have to pay for the storage unit if Carissa contributes. Then determine how much Margo will pay if she uses the storage unit for six months. I have an unknown within this scenario and that's the number of months. So the first thing I need to do here is define the variable. So let's let m equal the number of months. So we have two elements to this. First, we have what Margo has to pay, and then what Carissa is going to contribute to that will reduce Margo's cost. So I'm going to subtract those two elements. So let's come up with a way to express Margo's costs. First, she has to pay $3 to rent it, and then on top of that, so we're gonna add, it says plus $17 per month. So I have 17, and if it's per month, that's really saying we would multiply by the number of months. So we're gonna represent this as 17 times M. For Carissa, she is going to contribute $1 towards the processing fee, plus she is going to give her $3 per month, and again, per month would be three times M. So again, I want to go through and remember that when we have parentheses, there's an invisible one in front of that. So if I go through PEMDAS, I would have to distribute. So one times three, one times 17M gives me 3M plus 17M. Here, we're multiplying a negative one times one and a negative one times 3M, giving me negative one, because a positive times a negative is a negative, and negative one times positive three will give me negative 3M. Then I can combine like terms. So we have 7M, so we have 17M take away 3Ms, would leave us with 14 M's. Then I have three and I'm going to take away one would leave me with two. So I'm asked to calculate how much Margo will pay if she uses the storage unit for six months. So now I know a number within this is six. So we'd simply replace M with six and evaluate. Lesson, you have learned that terms that contain exactly the same variable symbol can be combined by addition or subtraction because the variable represents the same number. Any order, any grouping can be used where terms are added or subtracted in order to group like terms together. Changing the order of the terms in a sum does not affect the value of the expression for given values of the variable.